As we're now in spring and it's the start of spring, I wanted to get something in the ground. And what I've done is planted here a load of flax. I've planted flax on this field right here and also the field out the back here. So this is two substantial fields. They're both quite big and we've got flax all over the both of them. Now this really is becoming my money maker each year. I plant this in the spring, harvest it a couple of seasons later, and then that's enough for us to pay our taxes and fund everything else that we want to do. Now last season, it was enough for us to do all of that. Plus it left us with 2,800 coins almost. However, we do have to pay our taxes now. So after all that's done, we're gonna have about 500 coins left over. Now, this isn't very much, but this year we're actually doubling our flax production, so that should help. However, with the development of the new town, the taxes are going to keep going up too. So I think that this is gonna be enough money for us, but then on top of that, we're gonna to look to add in some extra things. And the way we're going to do that is by automating uh, things in our new town so that we don't have to spend our time doing too much. The villagers are gonna look after themselves, particularly when it comes to feeding themselves and getting themselves uh, water and stuff like that. And eventually we wanna to build tools into that too. But first things first, let's pay our taxes. Now, some of you will no doubt comment and say that I can get my wife to pay the taxes and I can, but we were actually closer to this place than she was. We had to go through here. So, uh, you know, we just wanted to come and get that done. Taxes are paid, and then we get 461 coins left, uh, which is not a lot, obviously, but it should be enough. Now, whilst I'm here in Piastovia, I want to make the most of my time here, and I want to check out this notice board and just see what we have here in terms of options to gain some uh, dynasty reputation. So, for example, this one right here, we have to deliver 62 feathers. We already have that in our storage, so we're definitely going to take that. Hunting wolves isn't something I've tried yet, but 400 coins is kind of tempting. It could be kind of fun, so I'll think about that one. Uh, these stone arrows, we do already have these. We already found them, so I'm going to take that one. And uh, this here, wheat grain, we don't have, so I might leave that one. Oh, that's the reward, sorry. Copper shovel. Yeah, I think I'll leave that one. It's just not really worth the uh, rewards that we're going to get out of it, I don't think. So we can always come back and do more. But for now, we do have a couple of quests here to be getting on with. Now, the reason I want to do quests is because in today's episode, as part of what we're doing, we're going to get some new people into our town, at least one new person, potentially two. At the moment in the new town, if you've seen my previous episodes, you'll, you'll know how that looks. In one of the houses, we're actually living in the house there. But what I've actually been able to do is under the houses section, we've unlocked this here house, right? Which is a big boy. And just scrolling out here so I can show you better, that's the size of the house, right? It's a pretty big house, uh, as you can see. This could be a nice house, and that's going to be our house. Obviously, we, we want to have the, the nicest house. So once I've built that for myself, which I'm looking to do in today's episode, then we can move into there, and it will free up a house for one or two other people to join us, and that's where we can get on with some more automation. I'm just coming to resource storage here to get all the stuff we need, and let's go and finish those quests. Okay, so here's the dude, Derwan. We can speak to him and just say whatever we want to say. Uh, don't really worry too much about the story side of things. I just kind of get those quests done. We're going to do both of those quests, uh, so that's all completed. Our coins are now up to almost 700 uh, from doing that, which is great. And let's see here, our dynasty reputation, 810, which is great. So we can have, I think, two more people in now, but certainly at least one more person, uh, person I should say, we can have in. Uh, so that's going to be pretty good. Let's go to the new town now, have a look at how things are going over there. And uh, we can actually start to look at where we want to place our house and get that one built. Unfortunately, we have a bit of a misty morning, but uh, in this game, we can't really wait for the weather. We have to just get on with things. And I want to build this house here. We're going to do a time lapse of it. This is going to be our house. So it is the top tier house that you can get in the game. The best of the best. Uh, only the best for us, of course. And I'll have a look at what we want to build it out of uh, in terms of like we might go off default and build like some uh, stone ones or wooden ones or something like that. We'll see as we go. As you can see, though, I have put a fence all the way around the perimeter of this. And this fence comes through here, it connects up to the sort of main fence area into the town. So I think that's quite nice. And we get the waterfall backdrop. We've also got this big maple tree here in our garden, which when that grows is going to be awesome. And we'll do some things in the garden, like we'll have our own private outhouse and wash basin and stuff like that. I think that's going to be a nice way of doing it and sort of separate us a little bit. I mean, essentially, we are meant to be like the leader, the king or whatever of this town, right? So I think it makes sense that we have the nicer house. And uh, and even if it doesn't, I don't care. I'm having it. <laughs> so let me go get some resources and let's build this thing. So here we go guys the house is complete and with that waterfall in the background it looks amazing once that tree over there has grown it's just a stump right now i think that's going to look really really cool as well and uh, it's quite nicely done we need to finish the fence off around it but the house itself is done so let's take a look i went for all the top tier stuff so we've got stone walls the whole way around obviously some of them with windows and doors and we went for the plank roof so it was a quite like resource intensive build 
Oh, and I'm just realizing I actually went for sticks up on there, didn't I? Hmm. Yeah, that was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. So if we get our hammer and we destroy, I don't want to destroy the whole house. I just want to destroy that bit. Okay, I just saved my game because I just want to try something. If we come in here, I want to just make sure I'm definitely looking at the right bit. So just that there, the water wall. Yeah, okay, we can just knock that through. Okay, that's great. Thank goodness for that. Uh, let's knock both of those through. And let's go back to building. And let's see, this time we'll do stone walls for each of these. Let me do that and then I'll show you when the house is actually complete. Okay, now the house is actually complete and that looks a lot better. We've got stone the whole way through there and the uh, the wooden plank roofs, as I said before. So it's looking pretty good. I did customize this a little bit, so I gave myself some extra uh, windows and things. If we head inside here, you see we've got this little window here, which overlooks over there, over the waterfall, which is quite nice, I think. It's pretty good. And a couple of windows out the back here. Put them uh, over this side, even though this one's above a bed. I still think that's like a nice place for it. Uh, we've got a couple of beds in the windows here, because this one actually sleeps four people. What we've got here, though, is a lot of room, and I'm hoping we can get a lot of decorations in here. Like, for example, if we go to things like tables, let's find seats and tables right here. We have a table that we can unlock right now. Uh, let's see, we've got a log table right there for 500, or a simple wooden table, or uh, that's, that's the best we could do. So if we did the simple wooden table, let's get the materials for building that and see if it actually fits in here. Okay, now we have the materials. Let's go back to it once again and see. Oh, damn, it doesn't place inside. Hmm. That's unfortunate. It'd be nice if we could place these inside. I'm guessing if I'm outside, I can place that down. So we'll make like an alfresco dining area here. We might even make like a bit of an area for the town, like a community dining section. But uh, it's a shame. I, I wonder what we can place in here because I'd like to place as much in here as I can. I know that we can, for example, uh, let's select our hammer here. If I'm holding that, I can decorate the walls. Let's see, you can decorate the foundation with slots. Okay, all right, so we can add rugs, and we definitely need to look at doing this because this is going to be cool. Uh, that's empty right now. Oh, this, is it just rugs the whole way around, though? Looks like it. So that's all we can put on the floor. It's a shame that there's no tables and things, but there we go. Not the end of the world. We'll get some rugs in here as we go through. The, wall, the uh, walls will be decorated. The floors might be a little bare. But we'll do what we can do. Oh, there's an attic up here. We can decorate the attic as well. Let's see. So we can hang... Oh, that's so cool. We can hang all different lanterns and things on. Uh, and actually... Oh, but we don't have the production because we have the resources for the hanging lantern. That looks like it would be really, really cool. Wow, some of these are really fancy. <laughs> okay, so we can put things up there too. This is something we're going to have to get onto and, and do over time. But it'll be a, a nice thing to do for sure. Now, some things we can build for our house, though, include the outhouse. That's something we wanted to do. Have a bit of a loo going on. So let's actually zoom out for all this stuff because I find that a bit easier. Uh, it just gives you a little bit better uh, view of the placement. Now, there's going to be a tree right there, isn't there? So we kind of want to factor that in and maybe do it around here somewhere. So just in the corner here, like that. Leaving room to the right-hand side there so we can get some sort of fence around this. The other thing we want to build is if we go to the workstation section, under laundry, we've got this wash basin right here. Oh, two planks short. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let me go make two planks up over here, and then we'll come back. Okay, so this wash basin can go just down here next to this. Uh, it's going to be kind of close to it. Because I'm thinking you wouldn't want to have a window and then people can look out the window and see the wash basin, right? Just for like the, you know, if we're, if we're role playing this a little bit. Now, in terms of fences, uh, we could do the trellis around this. But I thought because we're, we've are we got a bit of a nicer house, maybe we could do something a bit different here. Now, my goodness, it costs 900 just to buy the, uh, the plank fence. Okay, what about if we go for like a log fence? Uh, that's a palisade. We don't even, we're not able to build that yet. Wow, these are quite expensive. So yeah, as I was just saying, guys, I think the trellis is going to look really nice here. Um, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. We we need to save the money. Uh, we, uh, we're struggling a little bit for money at the moment. Certainly not at the level where we could be spending like eight, nine hundred just to have a nice fence around an outhouse, right? I don't think that's a good way of spending our money at this stage. So let's see. We want to get this as close as we can to these two things, but it's going to be a bit finicky, right? If I place it down there, is that going to be okay? Yep, that's fine. Okay, so then we just need a second one coming off of it. So it looks like about there is going to do that. Yeah, there we go. So this is the way we're going to do it, the same as we did with the other ones. Obviously, this is all stuff we can upgrade over time as well. So if we don't get it perfectly right now, it's not the end of the world. We can upgrade it, right? It's just one of those things that you got to be a bit smart with your money uh, at this stage of the game, and that wouldn't have been a smart use of it. And, you know, this is this way everybody else sees that, you know, their king has the same... Toilet facilities they have, right? There's no favoritism here. So there we go. Um, oh, got to replace that. That's awful. Okay, that's much better. So that's now nicely sort of cordoned off right there. And there you go. You can go in there and use the uh, facilities if you need to. Uh, now what I think I'll do is look to get the uh, fence around the outside built up here because uh, then we, we know our perimeters then, right? And we can see how everything's looking. 
And then after that's done, we'll have a look at what other facilities we might want to install here uh, to make our house look a little nicer. As a new day begins here in our town, let's go and sit down by the fire, see if anybody joins us, although not much of a fire because it is raining. Uh, but that's not going to dampen my mood because I have two very big thank yous to give out. Uh, for two more Super Chats, we're literally getting like one or more Super Chats every video at the moment, which is insane. I, I can't tell you how much the support means. I've also, uh, so this one here, a Super Chat, $25 from 2701. Um, man, thank you so much. That, I believe, is like my biggest ever Super Chat. Uh, so that that's amazing in and of itself. And I really appreciate that you guys are enjoying this content. Uh, you know, when I'm making content like this and we're getting a couple thousand views per video as opposed to some of my like tutorials and things that'll get like tens or even hundreds of thousands of views, uh, obviously, you know, that means the income goes down and stuff like that. But with these super chats and stuff, it actually really helps with supporting me. And it's like a 2,000 views video turns into like a 20,000 views video, you know, just because you guys are so supportive. Uh, and I know I don't want to take up too much of the episode of doing this because you guys just want to see me play the game. But I just do want to thank people who have you know given me their hard-earned cash uh, to support me. So 2700, thank you. We will have another one as well from Jean-Philippe Moreau. I think, I think <laughs> hopefully I'm saying that uh, at least close to correct. Uh, and this is Canadian dollars, guys, which is awesome. I absolutely love Canada. Um, I, I've been there a couple of times. I would love to live there. It's a fantastic place. So uh, Canadian dollars are always good in my book. So thank you so much. And while we're here, just again, a massive thank you to everyone who's done Super Chats, everyone who's joined the channel, everyone who's subscribed and watches. Honestly, you guys are the best. A massive, massive thank you. Now, Jean-Philippe Moreau, again, I really hope I'm saying that right, but it could be Jean. I don't know if it's Jean or John. It's like a Frenchy sort of name. But uh, either way, as message as well, uh, a tip here. And we got the same tip actually from Edge Runner White Lake. So they were saying about how we can name the houses, right? So if you go into management, go to these houses, we can name them. Now, we only have one house at the moment, like proper full tier house, and that's obviously ours. But with some of these other ones, we can open them up. And for example, like we've got Bod Support and Dalabora who live in there. So what we could do is on the house right here, we can type in H to give it a custom, custom name. And we can do like Bod's Support slash Dalabora and then enter that in. And boom, now we'll know where they live, right? Because it's a simple house and it's in brackets there what they do. You could put in their job titles as well if you wanted to. I'm not going to worry too much about that just yet, but I am going to rename all of these. So this is Domicile Lambert. Let's get on with it, renaming uh, the rest of them. So there we go. This has all now been done and uh, we know who's living in which house. Uh, I, I know who's living in my house, obviously, uh, so I'm not going to worry about that one. But I think this is good. I wanted to use it. Uh, we'll show this on, on camera and, and use the tips. Thank you to the people who sent those in. Uh, because I thought you guys might want to use that too. I love how they just sit down in here in the rain. I feel a bit sorry for them. <laughs> just sat here in the rain with no fire. Can we at least light the fire for them? Let's see. We can indeed. Okay, here we go. Let's let's do that. At least that'll warm them up a little bit. And that fire not being dampened by the rain. We love that. Now, just notice here, guys, Dalabor is actually pregnant at the moment. So we're going to have uh, a growing colony of children as well. We've got, obviously, Bogna, our wife, who's the mother, and Dalabor soon to be uh, giving birth as well. She's meant to be on hunting duties, but she won't be able to do that for a couple of years. That actually kind of suits us. It's not the end of the world. But what we want to look at now is getting uh, some automation going on with other things. So uh, we did also have uh, a comment here saying uh, about we could move the rooster and the hen, uh, and potentially even the geese as well, to the new town. Then we can get some uh, babies being born here. And we can get some eggs here and stuff like that. So thank you to MJ for that tip. I think we'll look to do that in a second. Um, but what I want to do is work on the automation as well. So basically get to a point where uh, they're making all their own food and water, hopefully by the end of today's episode. Let's move these animals across first, though. Uh, let's have a look here. Let's do the chickens first. We've got 10 of those. So if we move over like one rooster, that'd be good. So let's see, how do we actually move him? Uh, in fact, what we might need to do is go into the animal husbandry and find the correct hen house, which will be the newer of the two, and then just assign them in here. So we don't want anyone working in there. What we want is, uh, let's bring Rob the rooster. He can come over and let's bring over, uh, we'll have Peggy the hen. She can come over here. And we'll also just grab any other hen. Uh, maybe the younger ones is better. I don't really know. So we've got a rooster and a couple of hens there. And let's see if we want to do the same with the geese or not. So with the geese, we do have uh, a couple of goslings that we could bring over if we wanted to. For now, I'm just going to leave them there, though, and let them enjoy the uh, animal feed that's over there for them. But here we go. We've got a couple of chickens now that will be walking around here. This is nice. This will give the place a little bit more character as these are roaming around. And then eventually there'll be a lot of them because there'll be chicks and they'll grow up and stuff. And we'll also have the geese. So quite liking how that is actually uh, shaping up. Now, what I'm thinking is we need to get someone working in this workshop. And what we can do is get them to make up buckets and also get them to make up bowls. And then what we can do is have someone at the, at the well using those buckets to turn them into water. Right. So that'll be uh, the water automated. And with the bowls, we can use up a lot of the grain we've got. Now, if we go into our food storage right here, we have a ton of food right now, so we don't need to worry too much about it, which is why I'm doing water first, right? 
But in terms of like longer term, you see we've got 400 rye grain here. I've got like another thousand back at the barn. And as we do more and more farming, because I will be doing a lot of that in this series, then we can just keep turning the grain into food. So over here, what, what are you doing? You don't actually work here, do you? Oh, he's, he's grilling up some meat. Hold on a second. Uh, let me check something. Oh, yes, we have a cook. Okay, I didn't realize we, we do actually have a cook. So I did automate that. Uh, my bad. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, let's see. In the porridges, though, what I was looking at. Uh, so we've got all the different grains that you can use here. This one right here, rye grain and the wooden bowl. So that'll be really nice production then, right? Because eventually we'll have the farming automated, but for now we'll supply the grain. And then she's going to make up the planks, turn them into wooden bowls. We'll have someone doing that and then the cook. So all we need to do now, we have a cook, is get someone in here working at our workshop. Now, if we go to our houses, one of the nice things about having them named actually is we can quickly see now uh, under houses right here, Bogdala is living there alone. So she needs a man uh, to live there with her and they can be a family then. So we're looking for a man who wants to work in a workshop. Let's go find one and uh, bring them into our town. We're heading down to a new town. You see the campfire just here, guys. And uh, we're going to go and see what people we have here that we can uh, hire for our town. I'm mainly doing this just for the content side of things to show you guys a bit of a different town. And I love this just fish guts right there. Quite a busy campfire, um, but smaller than ours. We have more seats at our town, so, you know, we're winning on <laughs> that one. But I wanted to show you this because this town is absolutely fantastic. The way it's all built up here on the water. That to me just looks so, so cool. And I'm not sure like whether we can do much of this ourselves in the game. Why, why am I down here? Hang on a sec. Okay, here we go. If I'm trying to show you the town, being down in the reeds is probably not the best way of doing that. <laughs> but we have here this really awesome uh, decorated town. I like the way this is all uh, done like this, where the benches are like people have been sat here and they've pushed them away because they're done eating. I might steal that, I'm going to be honest. Um, and just the, the very feel of this. But the way it's all built up here on the water... I think that's really, really cool. Now, if this isn't something we're able to do ourselves, I think it'd be really cool if we could do it, um, is if that was added into the game one day. If it is something we can do ourselves, and I know someone will let me know in the comments, because you guys always do, uh, and if not, I'll just research it. But either way, uh, this is something I'd like to do at our town. Um, and actually, talking of which, some people have commented about the fishing hut, saying there's no space for it in the town uh, where we are building. That's actually not true. There is a space for it, and I'll show you guys that in a second. Love this enclosure here with all these sheep and lamb and stuff here, uh, enclosed by this wooden fence. Oh, I'm stuck. Okay, escape and unstuck, please. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so really cool town. I uh, just thought I'd take the time to show you a little couple bits about it. Instantly on the map, we are down here in Astoria, in the bottom right of the map. So do come check this one out for yourselves. It is worth the journey. And uh, obviously, you can get things while you're here. And the thing we want to get is the villagers, of course. So we're going to go head over there. And we're looking to find a man who's happy working in the workshop. So let's see how we go with that. Okay, this guy says that he likes simple, hard work. Uh, gets his blood flowing and muscles pumping. And he can even work with his bare hands. On top of that, he's only AC. I mean, this guy is pretty much perfect. So we're going to say here, creating a new village, looking for people. And uh, yeah, there we go. He's in. So Edmund, welcome to the village. And you're going to be uh, making lots of bowls and buckets. Uh, if you can find your way out of this circle. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully his cognitive abilities are better in the long run than that. It would be great if we could just put him on the back of the horse and take him with us. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So we're going to meet him back to the town and uh, let's get him set up with where he wants to live and all that sort of stuff. And in fact, we can just do that now uh, before we even leave. So let's go to management here. Uh, so let's go to, let's see, houses and the one with just Bogdala. Well, I'm marrying you off, Bogdala, and you're going to be with Edmund. There we go. So accept, put him in there. His mood will go up quite a lot. He's 53% uh, is, is Bogdala. He's minus one. So uh, hopefully she can cheer him up a bit. But if we go to our uh, villages and stuff here, you can see the happiness and it's actually very good. The reason for that is because they've all got really nice houses, which makes a big difference because we just built all those stone houses and also, you know, they're, they're fed and they've got water and stuff like that. So they're happy. Uh, so what we want to do now is go into our production buildings and into our workshop level two. And we're going to sign into the workshop Edmund. There we go. You can go in there and let's see about the tasks. So what we want is buckets. And I mean, I reckon a bucket a day would be enough. So let's see. That's one bucket a day. And wooden bowls, maybe if we made up like two of them a day, that would be 10 wooden bowls, right? So you have five each time. I mean, that to me sounds like it's going to be enough. Uh, but I guess we just, we could make extra if we wanted. Okay, let me have a think about this. Upon reflection, I've decided I'm going to keep it like this for now. So two wooden bowls each day, which is obviously 10 a day and one bucket. That to me, I think will be enough. But if it isn't, we can change it over time. What I'd rather do is start off where we're having to add little bits ourselves and then we can change that over time. Rather than ending up with like a load of excess and potentially wasting some of our planks and stuff like that on making too many buckets and bowls and things, um, we want to get it automated and we want to get it as, as close as we can to being, you know, if we make like one super day, we use one super day, like that type of thing. 
That's never going to happen, and you're always going to have like a little bit of excess that you can then sell. Uh, but we just don't want too much. And I just realized this is a camp here. Let's see if we find anything cool. Okay, 63 coins, always good. And we obviously take everything else. Uh, let's zoom in. This will help me not to miss anything, which I do every time. Some apple wine. I think that's worth a little bit of money. So that's always good. Little pouch here, which just gave us a pouch, which we can sell. Cabbages and wheat beer. Again, all stuff we can sell. Might do a little trip to Piastovi actually and do some selling of just random junk that I've got on me uh, as we go back through. Just all add in uh, a little bit of coins. Oh, and we need some animal feed added. Oh, a stone pickaxe. Okay, I was hoping that'd be a little bit of a better pickaxe, but never mind, it's still good. Okay, I think I've got everything there. You guys will let me know what I missed. I get a comment every time. I always miss something. <laughs> it's just my way. Um, so we're going to head a little change of plan to Piastovi, I think. Let's see, where are we? Uh, okay, we'll go to our town first, actually. We'll keep that in. We'll feed the animals. Then we'll head to Piastovia and sell up uh, just the random bits of junk in our inventory. And in fact, I might have a little look through my resource storage as well. And then we'll get back to the uh, automation side of things and see how we're going with that. I just noticed that uh, Bodzapur was living here in the town. He didn't have a job assigned. And I actually noticed that because, if we escape out here, uh, he, he said it. Where has he gone? Uh, we just went past him on our horse. Maybe he's gone over here now to the well because I've just assigned him there. But uh, it's always a good idea to keep a, an eye out on that. The chat comes up at the bottom of your screen. There he is, yeah, and sometimes that can be quite useful. So when you're near these villages and stuff, uh, none of them are going to say anything now. I was hoping they would, but there we go. Anyway, Bodzapur is going to do that. What we need to do is go into the buildings here and go down to the well, which would be, is that an extraction building? Yes, it is, and let's uh, give them a task. So really right now, all we worry about are the buckets of water. And again, I don't want to make too many of these. I honestly think, like, you make, like, one bucket a day, that'll be fine. Obviously, the work intensity is quite low at that point. And in the future, once we start automating stuff like for the water skins, then we could get a load of those made and potentially sell them. Um, but for now, we're just looking to, as I say, get things self-sustaining and do that. Uh, now, what I want to do is on me, I've got a load of animal feed. Let's check out like roughly half. I don't care about getting exact. Leave that there. We'll give the other half to the chickens that are up here. So then they are fed. Uh, so there we go. Fill that trough and let's see how much this actually fills it up. Oh, wow. 100%. Uh, and we still have 16 left from there, plus everything we chucked on the floor. Okay, that's very good. So this animal feed as well, we're now able to start making ourselves just through farming. So that's really nice. Now, the only thing is, I've got one little icon there showing up. Uh, if I go escape here in the top left there, we've got this showing up. So let's try and figure out why that is showing up. Now, interestingly, I noticed here the pigsty, if we double click on that, it says here, no worker, no animal. Um, but we do have the pigs and the piglets right here. Looks like we've actually had a new one being born. Uh, I think we only had two before, now we've got three. So I'm not sure exactly why that's saying that and whether that is the uh, issue that we've got there with the production thing showing in red in the top left. What I am going to do now, though, is head back to our other town because we basically now have everybody living over here. So anything that's left in that other town, we can take down. So things like, I think, the hunting building or something like that might be left up. Um, we want to move certain things over here as well. Like I've got a smithy over there. And Oh, hold on. What's going on here? Okay, horse doesn't like the gates or the donkey. Uh, so yeah, we want to take on as many buildings over there as we can, just leave the bare essentials, start moving things over here. And that'll also give us uh, more materials as well every time we take those buildings down and uh, we can use those for extra buildings over here. So without me overlooking things, and uh, we did have a worker here as well, it's turned to chaos at the farm. We've got the piglets, the donkey, <laughs> the pigs all in together. The donkey desperately trying to escape. The pigs are having none of it and it's pandemonium. Now, what I was trying to do is see... Right, so this trough is now empty. So for the pigs here, we need to either feed them, um, and let's actually collect all the manure while we're here as well, because that is still useful to us, uh, or we could move them to our new town. Now, look, eventually, obviously, we do want to move them to our new town, right? That's the that's the plan. And uh, what I think, though, is we're going to wait. We're going to wait until we get to a point where we can make a proper farm area. I really like the idea of making a really nice farm area, and we're not going to be able to do that just yet. So what I'll do is this animal feed right here, Let's give them maybe like 10, right? And then if we waste a little bit of that in the future, that's fine. So I actually just realized I put the 10 there, chuck the rest of it on the floor there and find that one. So yeah, that'll that'll give them a little bit to get going on with. Um, trying to get in here though is a little tricky. Okay, let's fill that one up. Maybe the donkey's eating all their feed as well. So that's the third fall now. And then as it runs out each time, we'll make a decision about do we want to give them more or not? Uh, how is this one doing? This one's okay. Yeah, so we'll just we'll give them more if it's like we're going to keep them here. But sooner or later, we will look to move them. The geese and the hens will just be moved as soon as we possibly can. And if we have to sell a couple in the meantime in order to get the numbers down because we've got them breeding in two places, then we'll do that and we'll make a little bit of money from them. Won't be much, but it'll be a little something. But all this stuff here we could collect too. We slept through to a new season, guys, and something very unexpected, <laughs> very awesome happened. We now have... 
baby Rudolph. Well, I guess toddler Rudolph. He's not a baby anymore. But he can open big doors all by... Oh my god, I just hit him in the face. Wait, let's go out. Is he okay? He seems good. So our son is now up and moving. He's walking around. And my goodness, is this village coming to life now with the animals we've got in here, all the villagers, and the, they gather around the campfires and stuff. We now have baby Rudolph walking around. <laughs> That's so good. And we actually talked to him. So what can we actually say? Uh, let me take a closer look at you. Oh, look at this. We get all this stuff. Wow, look at his stats. His stats are like, like his production's four, which puts him as the best in the village. We can see here all his stats. He's like the best in the village at anything. We just need to get him working on stuff uh, rather than anything else. Wait, assign workplace? Uh, villager's too young. I was going to say, surely. <laughs> surely that's not uh, how that goes. But yeah, he's, he's a little champ. He seems to be doing pretty good. He's happy and, and he's wandering around. Uh, what else can we say? We can tell him to move. I've got you a little something. Oh, we can get him presents. Oh, we should get him a gift, shouldn't we? We should definitely get him a little gift. Uh, for now, we'll just say bye. Let's let him explore. And uh, he's just wandering off into a cave. So the best parenting option right here is just to allow that and just get on with our life. The wolves and bears that are roaming in this area are, are definitely not a concern. <laughs> he's just, uh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Now, what I'm thinking is that might mean we've freed up another worker uh, in our wife. So let's have a look here. Bogner, who was our wife, is not currently uh, doing anything. Uh, it doesn't say mother next to her anymore, so that means we can actually get her to do some work, uh, potentially. Now, you're Bogner, aren't you? So let's see. Uh, let's see, what's uh, what's on your mind? No, I want to uh, find out her skills. Okay, so her best skill is actually survival. Um, I can't ask her about her skills like I can with other villagers, but survival is her best uh, trait. Look at this, everyone's gathering here today. This actually feels bigger than, than I realized it to be, but that's that's very cool. And uh, I think one of these is potentially pregnant. So let's have a look at, any, is there any other automation stuff in this area that needs to be done? So there isn't really anything that needs to be done at this stage. The food and their water is all being produced for them. Uh, so yeah, I don't think there's a ton of stuff that we actually need. The only thing I could do is move my sewing hut over here. Uh, we have the sewing hut in the other town right now. If I were to place this down here, at the moment, we don't have the automation. Oh, it does fit in there, that's cool. Uh, we don't have the automation of the uh, materials, like the farm materials, we're doing all that ourselves. What we could do is just deliver those and then have her just basically making up uh, all of that stuff and that will be our money then pretty much automated. Might be a nice way to finish this off as well, this little commune here, to have the sewing hut in here. So that's the only thing I'm considering so far. I'm going to keep going through the rest of these buildings, but that's maybe where we'll end up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, guys. I, I kind of like the, the plan of that. Now, there was a little way of getting it in here, wasn't there? But unfortunately, like it faces out like that, that right there is how it sort of wants to be. So I'm just wondering if there's a, a different way of us get. Oh, we can get in there just about. Let's see. Okay, so I could place the sewing hut just here, guys. Now, I daren't move because there's such a small area here where this can actually be placed. So that is one option. And then it faces out onto the street like this. Uh, and now I can find that again later if I need because I do need to show you guys. Uh, the other option is to place it like this. So this might be the better way to go. Yeah, I think this is the better way to go. So we we'll place it down there. Now, what I'm really hoping is if we get the roads here can we get a road in through here? Looks like we can. So on a little road going from next to the well, so like maybe just there like that, down here like this, connecting up to the main path as best as we can. So get that as close as we can, which is about there. Okay, very good. So now we do have like a little street coming down here, a very thin, very medieval street. Let's call it that. <laughs> so we'll move the sewing hut over to here and we'll get our wifey uh, working in the sewing hut. Might not be the best job in the world for her, um, but it's it's okay. Now, I won't time-lapse this because uh, we've done this before, but let's just get that happening and then see what we want to automate with this. Now, one of the issues that we have under the management screen here, if we go down to the sewing hut and uh, have a look at that, when we go to the production is uh, we don't have anything that she can make here with like the linen thread and linen fabric. Uh, however, all that's about to change. We are now in summer, which means our fields are ready to harvest. And you can see we've got two massive fields here where we're going to get an absolute ton of flats. We're very excited for this. First, though, we want to head over into Piastovia, just across the road here. And we're going to buy uh, some, some better tools for doing this farm. So some iron uh, scythes would be really good. Uh, I'm not sure what we've got. Let's see. We've got 1,300 odd coins. Uh, I did sell a load of stuff earlier, so we have got a bit, a bit of options right here. And what this will do is it will give us uh, a few things. One will be all the flax that we can use for all the linen and stuff like that. And two, we'll get all the flax grain out of it. And I think we can use that for uh, for the food as well. So it's going to be like at this stage, we're going to be set for a long time. And uh, I'll be really interested to see then how much money we're going to get out of this. And what we can do is, uh, as I say, get our wife basically making up as much of the flax stuff and that she can into the linen that we can sell. And it gives us time to do other things so we can be a bit more uh, productive in that way. So an iron scythe is 650. So, I mean, I think we're going to need two of them in order to do this. But I'm actually going to go for it because 
Oh wait, did she only have one? Okay, I'm not going to go for it. Uh, that's plan B. We will buy one iron and we'll buy one bronze as well for now. And uh, we've spent a good chunk of our coins on that. But it is going to speed things up so, so much. And uh, we'll get more than that money back by far once we come to uh, selling our harvest. Of course, eventually we'll be able to make all this stuff up so we won't have to spend that money, which will be really nice. With all that farming done, we're back at the new town now. And uh, if we head up here, what I'm going to do is put in some of this flax stalk. We've only got three of those, but you can see there... 639 flax. So what that means is if we go back into the management here and go down to the production building of the sewing hut, that we can now tell uh, Bogner, is it, whatever it is, to do a lot more stuff here. So we've got the water skins. Um, let's put that up a little bit so it's more than one a day. Uh, and then is it, uh, we can make the linen fabric, but not the linen thread, I suppose, because uh, we need to make the linen fabric up first. So we'll put that up and let's see how many we can actually make a day here. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm just noticing that is not very many per day. So... Yeah, okay. I mean, it's going to help, in the, I guess, over the course of the long run, but we're going to need to do a lot of this stuff ourselves. Now, talking of which, I have got a ton of uh, linen thread. I think we've got, uh, sorry, flax that we can turn into linen thread. So uh, we're going to be good on that uh, score. But uh, yeah, at least now, like, this is all automated and she can be making that up for us and just kind of helping out a little bit. Now, old man told me about the fishing spot, and I want to show you guys there's a couple of fishing spots on the map here where you can actually place it down. So this is one of them, right? Just here, very near to this bridge. And there's actually like a few, you see, and I'm getting a fair bit of green around here. So you've got a few options around here. And it's quite a nice spot for it, I think, with that in the background and near the bridge. So if you're looking to do fishing, that's one option you have. The other option, we need to go down the river a bit. So let me head down there, and then I'll show you it on the map. So just around here, you'll see there's a few options, right? We can place it so this uh, along this bit of river right here. We can place it anywhere along here. So we've got quite a lot of options here. And as we snake down along this river, you see here, there's actually quite a few options. Now, don't, don't I get into the red bits here? And this is where it becomes more difficult. But there are still options all the way down along here. So I'm not sure why people thought you couldn't do the fishing lodge around here. There are actually, like, you can do it just about anywhere along this river. Uh, and if we go onto the map right now, you'll see that I am just here. So the waterfall is, like, that's the bridge and that's the waterfall there. So it's just down this river. It's not even that far. And you'd probably be building your town around here. So, yeah, I did get a few comments about that. I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you to Old Man for mentioning it. You guys can place it just about anywhere apart from the thinner bits of the river up here, I believe. So from up here on the hill, we have a wonderful view of our town and a lovely place to end this episode and say once again, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the support, of course. And just a reminder, my Discord, which is linked in the description, does have a Medieval Dynasty section, which has been going really well. There's a lot of people over there. If you want to get involved and join that, then I look forward to seeing you there. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.